All right, so we got her unloaded. Uh, talked for quite a while. It's really nice being able to, you know, build that community and share the knowledge that we've got uh, one on one. We do love meeting people in the community, but it is now now nice and warm. Uh, it's only 8:30, and that sun is shining down. Um, she has since moved into this A-frame, so I'm gonna cross my fingers that she'll come out for us. Um, but we can at least talk through how we're gonna do the quarantine pin. Um, we'll do a quick little walk, but it's. It's what is our bore pin from that video showing, you know, where we've got everything lined out. So it's those two little side yards um, that we're going to wind up grazing later. We'll probably give this about a 60 day rest just to, means we're going to have to bump back and forth between those other two pins for the two groups for a little more than I want. But it also means that uh, this will have had plenty of time after she's been here. She's going with the group that's going back and forth. So I may go, I may after the 30 days just call it, but probably not at least 45 i don't i'm still debating on that one we'll see um kristen boyer if you watch this i don't know maybe give me give me your thoughts on it you can just shoot me a message um but uh it's these two pins this is probably quarter of an acre maybe maybe um maybe even only a tenth of an acre it's not a very big one um but she'll just get pinned in here for 30 days this will give us a chance to keep an eye on her Make sure she doesn't have any issues that she could bring to the rest of our herd. If she's got anything, it gives her a chance to expel it out, which is then why the rest period after her quarantine for this paddock to make sure she doesn't then take it, somebody else pick it back up. Um, but most things can't really survive without a host for very long. Um, <clears throat> except those Ascarsis roundworms, those little buggers. But that's what we've got this for and the Ivermac here. Um, so we are, and I was just talking with Barth about this, uh, fellow that dropped her off for me um so we're actually dialing back the amount of ivermec we use um we used to worm twice a year with it everybody get it and it was kind of indiscriminate um as far as where the pigs were at and whatnot but i missed this fall didn't even think twice and just just forgot about it um but this spring something kind of cool happened if you saw the we've got good insects video um we found dung beetles for the first time this year um and that was that was pretty amazing um, in our regenerative journey to start seeing that. And all it took was us forgetting to Ivermec once. So that was one year then from spring to spring that no Ivermec was used on our farm and then we had dung beetles. So the, one of the great things about dung beetles beyond them being a keystone species for the environment and ecosystem in a prairie type ecosystem um, is that they bury dung or break it down and spread it out depending on whether or not they're dwellers, tunnelers or rollers. Um, but they get that dung moved around and the eggs reduced um, <clears throat> for parasites. So they'll reduce your parasite load just by helping mitigate that, uh, that waste. But Ivermec is residual in dung <clears throat> for a certain period of time after. I can't remember how long it stays after the pig is passing it out and spreading it around. Um, <clears throat> but then in that dung, it'll stay for about 290 days in your soil killing or causing motor control issues in dung beetles. So it drastically reduces their ability to reproduce and exist. So we are cutting back on the amount of ivermec we use um, by putting it not, not reducing the amount per pig or anything because that then causes issues with disease resistance in or drug resistance in the worms. We're not doing that, but we are um, confining it to areas on our farm to mitigate our use of it. Um, we may go down to just once a year, but honestly, what I'm gonna do is I'll either start taking in fecal samples to get tested or I'll get a microscope and start doing those myself. Um, it's not that hard. Um, but we're going to, when we do worm with ivermectin, it'll either only be in the quarantine yard, only in the farrowing yards, or only in the piglet weaning yard. Um, and the piglet weaning yard gets shoveled and put into the um, compost bin, which, you know, not great for the compost to then be con concentrating it there, but that's only the piglets we're retaining. So it's not that bad. The sows will be just in that farrowing yard. So that little area that already gets a bunch of deep straw and so gets a lot of boost to biological activity, more so than what the pasture already gets. Quarantine yard, you know, it, it's off by itself. Um, it's on the other end of the farm. And it, it'll be a nice test um, to see whether or not, because currently the boars had to be in here for about two months. And I see they were just pulled out of here a couple days ago. There's no piles of poop. So um, I've walked it a time or two and I really couldn't find any. And you know they had to poop in two months. I've seen them do it in here. But it, that's one thing we started noticing with that 
with the dung beetles, the dwellers at least, are within 24, 48 hours shredding our dung piles down into just little things of confetti that are spreading around. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. Like that's, that's awesome. It'll be interesting to see how that compares here versus the rest of the field that does have Ivermec and doesn't have Ivermec. Um, and in case it's just a weird fluke thing, but that's all the research is saying that that's one of the leading causes of it. Um, I'm gonna stop tearing up your guys' time on these. I'm just pretty, pretty jazzed about dung beetles right now. Um, so to give our Ivermec, we give the injectable Ivermec orally. So it's the Normectin that we use, the 1% uh, sterile solution injection for cattle and swine. We buy the big bottle. Um, <clears throat> And then for, uh, for little piglets, we just use a 1cc, or a, not a 1cc, it's a 3cc, 3 milliliter syringe. Um, <clears throat> same as we use for our uh, ferrosure and whatnot. And uh, for the sows, we got to use a bigger one because they need 50 cc's per, or 1cc per 50 pounds live weight, sorry. Um, so for a little piglet, you know, they're only 25, 30, 40 pounds maybe. So one cc is perfect. We get one cc. Um, <clears throat> and they'll just take it right in there and you can just work it back into their mouth and shoot it in their mouth because you're holding on to them. It's not a big deal. Um, for the adults, they're kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so we use the needles first to remove from the bottle. And that is, see if we can get it to show it. This is an 18 gauge, oh, there we go, 18 gauge one inch needle. They come like this. We buy them from Valley Vet in a big old box. We bought once five years ago and have never run out. Pop off a little bottom piece, stick it in your pocket. Top of the syringe here, twist in, okay. That pops off, got your needle, keep a hold of that. Flip your bottle upside down so that the air is at the top. Pull out. So according to tape weight, she's about 375. Um, so we're gonna go with, and my thing is all worn off. We're gonna go a little bit on the heavier end on that. So we're gonna go eight. That'd be for about a 400 pound pig. So there's eight. I need to get a new large syringe. We are going to inject air into the bottle. Pull out. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Uh, and it looks like I Thought I cleaned this syringe pretty good, but it looks like there's a little bit of something on there. There's seven. There's eight. It'd just be vitamin B if there's anything left on it, so I'm not, it's not like, oh God, what am I giving her? Vitamin B is not gonna hurt her. <clears throat> All right, and so now that little special cap that we saved for later goes back on. And actually, I'm gonna draw a little bit of air to make sure that I don't accidentally shoot out and waste wormer everywhere. And we'll twist off the top. If we can, find that little bottom piece I threw in my pocket. Go ahead and put it back on. It'll snap into place. Now that's pretty safe. I'm gonna throw it in my big cargo pocket and cross my fingers. Um, but that's why we keep all the pieces. You can put it back together and you're safe. Um, and just hope I guess I don't put a needle in my leg. Um, <clears throat> and then I have a big jar of six pound thing of uh, Peter Pan peanut butter, okay? Um, and this is one I have robbed from the house to be, and not robbed recently, it's mostly empty. Um, I robbed this from the house to be the garage one in our livestock first aid kit. So if I'm mixing up something in the sink or something for a pig that's just acting funny and kind of off, I call it my kitchen sink mix and it's uh, just a mix of uh, protein, some peanut butter, uh, molasses for sugar, apple cider vinegar and uh, an electrolyte mix um, just to drench and you know if they're it's just hot or and they're acting all funky or if I've, I've had a couple times that I've had a pig pretty sick um, I'll give them that just as a boost to make sure like if they're off food and water that's my mix to be able to make sure that they're getting something in their system uh, once to twice a day um, make sure they don't get dehydrated we've got another we have three things of these this peanut butter one is labeled people on top one is labeled dogs on top, and then this one has no label, but it stays out in the garage and it gets hot in there. So there's no worries about us trying to eat this one. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just take this and we will put some peanut butter on there. 
and attempt to not get it over the little hole. I did a little bit, but it's gonna blast right through it. So I'm gonna round that out a little bit so there's not a sharp piece that falls off and distracts her. But that's it. I put some peanut butter on the tip of it. Um, sometimes I get wise to it. I used to put it in uh, like the cheap gas station donuts or Twinkies or I also had the junk food. Um, and sometimes it'd crumble and fall out. We used to do eggs. Eggs do not hold liquid very well, so I don't recommend that one. Um, but we had a lot of hard boiled eggs. So peanut butter seems to be the next best thing because then they're kind of and you'll go like that with their mouth and then you can just do that like we talked about in the other video with the depress on the hand there and i can just kind of ha and shoot it in and all i'm aiming to do is shoot it as far back down the mouth as i can and that's really it um she's nestled up in that house and you can see i'm kind of sweating up a storm here um but i am still rocking my that little farm shirt um we're gonna go ahead and give her give her this see if we can't catch that on film So, I'm sorry you're not going to see it uh, full well, but all I'm going to do, she's just turning around now. So I'd, I'd had a couple chances to shoot it in her mouth, but I really wanted to get her to come out so you could see. Um, she's hot. She's trying to turn a bunch of the dirt to get down to a nice cool spot. I'll refill her wallow. Um, and I'll let it dry out when the boys left uh, as soon as I'm done with all this. But I'm just going to stick it in her mouth when she opens up to try to eat the peanut butter from me and then squirt it in there and that's it and then you'll you know if you see me run out it's because she's chasing me but she's seeming pretty chill all right so sorry you didn't get to see that very well and i know the sun's right behind me so that's kind of ruining your vision of that but you can see what that looks like now all gross um that's it though just um, if you've got, you know, they're real used to you and it's your own pig, they're going to see you coming and you're holding something up. They're going to smell that peanut butter and they're going to usually just go like that. And you can get that syringe real close or in their mouth if you can, and then just shoot it back down the throat. Um, oh man, I've got peanut butter all over my uh, Pivo tripod. That's fun. Um, I'm trying to lower it here. But uh, with her, she just kind of gave me just enough open that I stuffed it back in there and shot it back in there. And then she's just sitting there going... And some of it comes out, um, but that's why you do the 50 or the 1cc for 50 pounds. That's just slightly over, so a little bit gets wasted. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that'll do it. Um, I didn't note any other issues on her. If I had noted uh, lice or anything like that, I'd have then done, <laughs> I'd have done uh, a dose, three doses total over 11 days but I didn't notice anything on her that looked like that. I'll still be keeping an eye on her while she's here in quarantine. Um, so yeah, one dose ought to be plenty to remove really any, any parasite load. Um, and we'll keep an eye on her stool, see if we notice anything there. Um, all right, I am going to go, uh, I haven't really touched her in any other way beyond my boots. So I'm gonna go spray off my boots, um, disinfect them, and then I'm gonna I'm going to wipe down my tripod and camera because I will touch that, wash my hands, and uh, get back to work on the farm. Thank you, folks. Okay, so I've got a pickup. Uh, any second, I just got done catching them, and it is hot. Um, so I thought since I couldn't get uh, that sow to show you guys what it looks like given that orally, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it on a piglet real quick, and you'll get to see that. Same procedure smaller syringe this is a three milliliter syringe brand new needle same type of wormer same wormer bottle um pop that bottom off set it in my pocket where i'll struggle to pull it back out later twist our needle on oh, come on. pop off one cc of air bottle upside down stab in inject air pull out 1cc, little bit of airspace, make sure I don't waste any. Needle cap on, twist the needle off, set that and the bottle of wormer to the side. Open crate of piglets. Don't put fish in your mouth.
That's okay for the first one, don't do it on the others, because then your hands are all gross. Um, so, normally I'm not trying to angle this towards the camera, but then we're just gonna work that syringe down in there, squirt. And if we'll hold it up like this for just a sec, then I know he's not gonna spit it back out. Usually they'll, he's just gonna chill. We're gonna put him in the crate. And that's it. That's how we give it orally. Um, so this is done before they're picked up and left. I don't like the fact that I'm doing this before they're about to be hauled on a 90 something degree day, but um, we always wear them right before they leave to make sure that there's as little chance for recontamination on our farm if, you know, pigs eat poop, it is what it is. So don't want them to get recontaminated after I've wormed them and then them leave and then still have worms. So I love worming right before they go. Um, even though there's a chance of them getting car sick and vomiting, some of them back up, their body will at least absorb some. That's a one cc per 50 pound live weight, and that's a 20, 20 ish pound pig. So it's the correct amount of dosage bound to be absorbed. So that's it.